assisted by Deacon Mary Wood. Please stand up for the opening hymn.
are given the weight of the big world. They are made to all. Increase the great grace of the soul. The Lord may grasp and rightly understand in what part they have been washed. By the Spirit they have been born. By the blood they have been redeemed. For our Lord Jesus Christ, our Son, who lives in very spirit, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and God forever and ever.
reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey His commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world? But the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. But these are written so that you may come to believe 
that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the wonderful gift of faith in God. First in the Gospel, we hear about Thomas proclaiming his faith after encountering the risen Christ. And then we celebrate the Feast of the Divine Mercy that directs our attention to God's immense love for us, the marvelous gift given us death and resurrection and his never ending font of mercy. How often in our lives do we find ourselves acting like Thomas, Thomas in today's gospel? Maybe we use words like I need to see it to believe it or just I need to see it. Or perhaps we treat a speaker's words with some degree of skepticism until we can ascertain a degree of validity to their words. This is part of our human nature. So in today's gospel, Christ says to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. And Thomas freely responds to this invitation from God with the words, My Lord and my God. These words by Thomas are an act of faith, an act of adoration, an act of self surrender without limits. Thomas's faith springs forth from the immense sorrow he has experienced by doubting that Jesus had risen from the dead. And these doubts of Thomas open up the gates to the path that leads us to Jesus when we too come to believe. In this gospel reading, the risen Christ is interacting with this church. It is our story, and we need to see ourselves there with the disciples. We do live in the upper room with the doors locked. Our fears, our doubts, lock us into the upper room. Perhaps it's the fear of death or the fear of isolation, or the fear of failure, or the fear of the consequences of our sins. And Jesus comes to us and he stands among us where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of you saying, Shalom, peace be with you. The world cannot get this peace, because the worldly peace is always passing, always fleeting. Worldly peace is just a pause between conflicts, a pause between wars. But the peace Christ gives comes from his conquest of death and sin. And it is in this story that we experience the truth that God is always calling us into a relationship with Him. He's always saying, come, come to me, come. And He never ceases to draw humanity to Himself. But we must really respond to that invitation. 
And our response to God is by faith, wherein we strive to completely submit our intellect and our will to God. Our I believe is to be made with the same exuberance and willingness of Thomas, where our assent to God is given with our whole being. Every Sunday, God engages us with His Word in the sacred scriptures. And we read, striving to draw ever closer to Him. Thomas exclaims, My Lord and my God. And in our way, we respond with, I believe in our profession of faith. So let's take a moment to reflect on where our I believe originates from. Is it only from our mind? Do we submit our full intellect and will to God? What is the source of your I believe? Through his love, Jesus Christ attracts to himself the people of every generation. And today on this feast, on the eve of the feast of the divine mercy, we are reminded of just how majestic, how great, how magnificent this love is. Jesus, in being mystically present, to St. Faustina, he instructed her to have a particular meeting made that would remind all who believe how great his love is and the mercy that he grants to those who seek forgiveness. The painting is a modern day symbol pointing us to the great merciful love of the Father and the Son, shown to us fiction. With the white and red rays emanating from the heart of Jesus in that picture, representing the water and blood that flowed from his side when the soldier pierced it. In Jesus, in appearing to his disciples and then again separately to Thomas, he highlighted the wounds on his glorified body. Not once, but twice, showing his divine mercy. Showing God's love, reaching out to meet and overcome the misery of his creatures caused by our sins. Then we experience Jesus bringing peace and joy to his disciples and to us as he breathes upon them the breath of the Holy Spirit, giving them the gift to forgive the sins of humanity, yesterday, today, and forever. In this act, Jesus gives the apostles the power of God's mercy for the sinner. Mercy, this small five-letter, fortified letters with a huge meaning. And quoting from Francis, Mercy, the ultimate and supreme act by which God comes to meet us. Mercy, the fundamental law that dwells in the heart of every person and looks sincerely into the eyes of his brothers and sisters on the path of life. Mercy, the bridge that connects God and man, opening our hearts to the hope of being loved forever, despite our sinfulness. The church's first truth is the love of Christ. We are to be servants of this love and to reveal it to all people, a love that forgives and expresses itself in the gift of oneself. 
Christ has breathed the Holy Spirit into us, sending us on our mission through the words of the Gospel. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. We go on this mission at the end of every Mass, when the deacon proclaims, Go in peace, glorify the Lord with your life. Reflecting on today's readings, may we shatter the blocks on the doors of the upper room, because the risen Lord has conquered our fears. St. John in the second reading promises, whoever believes Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And what, of, what is born of God conquers the world. And what is born of God is our faith. Let me leave these words of St. Christina with you. O oh, inexhaustible spring of divine mercy, pour yourself out upon us. Your goodness knows no limits. Confirm, O oh Lord, the power of your mercy over the abyss of my misery. For you have no limit to your mercies. Wonderful and matchless is your mercy, astonishing the human and angelic mind. Shalom, peace be with you.
for those who are sick, those who are dying, those who died of coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Father of infinite mercy, we do not see your Son, but we love him. And offer our words in his name. We rejoice because we believe in him who lives and reigns forever and ever.
and when we have gathered the Islam and when we response to the disciples. So now Christ he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful. We ask that we send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify the skin of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the last supper, he took bread and he said a blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and live with it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave the thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Thank you, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the eternal covenant, which is poured out for the end for many, for the forgiveness of sins, to this memory of me. The mystery of faith. Be there to say, Our Father, who 
Please stand and let us pray. Grant the prayer of my God that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And whatever blessing is answered. Amen. May God provide the resurrection of His only begotten Son. Was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by his redeeming war, you have received the gift of everlasting freedom. May he bear his eternal inheritance. 